as the song says, unspeakable joy, as we welcome you to the first Sunday of the Advent season. Our opening song begins with this line. It says, we stand and we lift up our hands because the joy of the Lord is our what? The joy of the Lord is our strength. So wherever you are, we ask that you stand and we worship our risen Savior together. Sing these words with us. We stand and lift up our hands for the joy of the Lord is our strength. We bow down.
back. Passion so amazing Lord, you come to give you thanks For all you have done And this is time Because of your love of his love we've come out of a season of gratitude and thanksgiving and because he lives we are alive I believe in the sun
Let my song join the one that never ends Because He lives I love this verse I was dead in the grave covered in sin and shame I heard mercy call my name He rolled the stone Because he lives and I can face tomorrow Because he lives and every fear is gone I know he holds my life, my future in his hand song, join the one that never ends. Amen. Amen. I'm alive. I'm alive because he lives. Amen. Amen. Let my song join the one that never ends because he lives. Sing that again. Because he lives. You're alive. I'm alive. And we're alive. As he lives. He's seated for just a moment.
know, the word Thanksgiving appears in Scripture an inordinate amount of times. I don't know the exact number because I didn't prepare to tell you that. So you go home and you tell me how many times the word Thanksgiving or thanks appears in the Bible. The holiday Thanksgiving is over, but the season of gratitude never ends. Many of you have learned to pray using the acronym ACTS, A-C-T-S, Adoration, Confession. What does that T stand for? Thanksgiving and Supplication. I love, having, love having a little guy at home because during meal times, the blessing turns into being thankful for virtually everything on the table, down to the salt and the pepper and the glasses and the napkins, and it gets a little burdensome and onerous when you're hungry, but <laughs> it's a good reminder to be thankful in all. Say, God is a God of wonder and majesty. He's also the sustainer of life, and he orders every little thing down to the salt and the pepper and the napkins and the glasses and everything on table while my food is getting cold. <laughs> but I pray that we have a spirit of thanksgiving that permeates our lives. I've tried to do that in my own life, thanking God when the traffic light turns green when perhaps I'm a little late to the office or getting that good parking spot. Is that trite? Maybe. But it's a spirit of gratitude. And I pray that we live our lives with thanksgiving for things great and small. I love this next song. It has become one of my favorites. It says, My heart is filled with thankfulness, to him who bore my pain, who plumbed the depths of my disgrace and gave me life again. My heart, and I pray your heart, is filled with thankfulness this season and throughout the year. Will you stand and sing along with us? i 
Good morning, church. Hope everyone had a good Thanksgiving uh, this last week. I personally enjoyed a good getaway. I uh, got to go back to Missouri. Uh, introduced my new baby to the rest of my family. Um, but I hope everybody also got some good food and some good rest. And in this season, like Chip said this morning and like Chris said last week, I hope that we remember to be thankful for the Holy Spirit that lives in us and dwells in us. And I hope that we remember to be thankful for Christ who died on that cross so that way the Holy Spirit could come and dwell on us. I need to slow down. I know. Everybody. Uh, obviously, I'm not the person that's normally up here. Hi, for those of you that don't know me. I'm Blaine. I'm the youth pastor. Uh, I seen a joke this morning that said the church usually gets excited when the youth pastor preaches because church usually lasts about 20 minutes less. Uh, so uh, I'm going to try and not speed through this. Um, if you're a regular, it's good to see you. Sorry. Just kidding. Um, and if you're new, I promise I won't be back up here next week. Um, I told Chip to also prepare a few extra songs for the invitational. Um, <laughs> but uh, before we get started, children, you guys are dismissed for Children's Church. I think Miss Rose and Miss Kelly are going to be in the back. Um, but in all seriousness, I am super excited to get to share this week's message with you guys. Um, also, sorry for the people watching. I'm going to read off this paper, so you might just see the top of my head the whole time. Um, we're going to be picking up where Chris left off last week in the book of Acts. And now, over the last two weeks, we've been in the new church, and we've seen the Holy Spirit come down and dwell upon the apostles and work miracles through them. And last week, Chris left off with Peter giving a sermon to those who witnessed these miracles. Uh, and he's addressing those who doubted what they seen, who had, who had called them, them drunkards. And where we take off this week, Peter's going to start off with a statement that has raised a modern theological debate. Um, and that question is, do we as Christians need to be baptized to be saved? But before we get into that, let's go to the Lord in prayer and pray he can help me get through this this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Uh, thank you for allowing us to come together and worship you, God. Thank you for using me, uh, using me as a mouthpiece. Uh, I was always told that you could make a donkey talk so you could make me talk. Um, and I pray that your words are used this morning and not my own, and I pray that you touch the hearts of somebody with these words this morning, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, so the book of Acts. We're going to be in Acts chapter 2, starting in verse 37. Well, actually, we're going to back it up one verse where Chris ended last week, 
because it's 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 really good. So Acts two verses thirty six through thirty seven says, therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? So here Peter is talking to everyone who's just witnessed the Holy Spirit come down on them and more specifically, he was talking to the doubters, which they had seen. And he says, you already know the truth. You already know that Jesus uh, was the Christ, and you guys were the ones that crucified him, and that God sent him. And how they, and, and it says they were cut to the heart. It means they did realize that what Peter was saying is true, so they they res- what how they respond is amazing. What what do we do? And so picking up in verse thirty eight, he explains uh, going through verses thirty eight and thirty nine. Then Peter said to them, "Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promises to you and to your children." And to all who are afar off, as many as the Lord our God will call. Now this is the verse that raises the question. Do we as Christians need to be baptized to be saved? And if so, are we not saved by faith alone, or are we saved by faith plus works? Now the cause of this question is in verse 38. It says... Be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. Um, and the, the word in question here is the word for, or more specifically, the Greek word. I don't have a projector, so I can't put it up there. I don't have an iPad. It's pronounced aes, and it's spelled E-I-S. Uh, now, this Greek word, uh, or the assumption is that this word, when it is said, for the remission of your sins, for means in order to receive or in order to get remission or forgiveness for your sins. But just like the English version for, the Greek word also has multiple meanings. And so we'll, we'll go into some of these real quick. So some of those meanings are in order to receive, because of or as a result of or in regard to. Now, all of these would fit this verse. You could, you could put each one of those in, in there, and it would make sense. But there are three other verses that use this word aes in conjunction to the word the, to baptism or baptize. So, the first verse that uh, goes into that is Matthew 3, verse 11. Now, Matthew 3, verse 11 says, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he who is coming is, who, he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Now, where it uses that word, that aes, is at the very beginning. It says, I baptize you with water unto repentance. Now, the word aes is translated to unto there. And we can uh, make the assumption there that it's, it's not saying you need to be baptized in order to get repentance. It's you've repented and now be baptized. Uh, again, in... Uh, Oh man, lost my place. Romans 6, 3. Take it there. It says, Or do you not know that many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Now that word there into is what A.S. is translated to. And it's uh, 
we were baptized as a result of his death. And then the last verse is 1 Corinthians 10.2. Sorry, I'm making y'all flip this morning. It says, all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. Now, again, A.S. is translated to into there. Meaning, as a result of Moses in the cloud, we were, we were baptized. So, if it's consistent that the way that A.S. is used in conjunction with the word baptize, uh, we can make the conclusion that Acts 23 is also referred to as being a result of. Um, now, that's the grammatical explanation of saying that baptize, baptism is not a requirement for salvation. Now, the other places in the Bible that prove this is 1 Corinthians 1, starting in verse 12. The church of Corinth is arguing, who is it better to be baptized under? Is it better to be baptized under Paul or under Apollo or under Cephas or under Jesus? And, and Paul is baffled by this and says, you guys have missed the point. Uh, I wasn't sent here to baptize you. In fact, I'm glad I didn't baptize many of you because you've missed the mark. I wasn't sent here to baptize you. I was sent to preach the gospel. And then in Romans 1, verse 16, he says that the gospel is what saves. The gospel is salvation. So Paul's making the, uh, splitting up those two words, baptize and salvation. So with that, we can conclude that baptism is not part of the gospel, so it's not necessary for salvation. Now, don't mishear me. Uh, I'm not saying that baptism isn't important. I'm just saying that all that water does is get you wet. Uh, baptism is a step of obedience, uh, but it's not a requirement of salvation. Uh, the perfect example of this is uh, the thief on the cross. The thief on the cross was never baptized, and Jesus said, you'll be in heaven with me today. And, and that's what happened. Now, continuing on, uh, and with many other words he testified, or going back to Acts 2, verse 40, it says, and with many other words he testified and exhorted men, saying, be saved from this perverse generation. And then those who gladly received his word were baptized. So again, there's that, that split. Um, and that day, about 3,000 souls were added to them, and they continued steadfastly in apostles' doctrine and fellowship. And in the breaking of bread and in prayers... Uh, so, the, the point that I'm trying to make today is that uh, hold on, sorry uh, lost my place back up, we're just going to back up so, and it says and with many other words he testified and exhorted them saying be saved from this perverse generation then those who gladly received his word were baptized and that day, about 3,000 souls were added to them. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in prayers. Then fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. Now all who believed were together and, all things in or, and had all things in common, and sold their possessions and goods, and divided them among all as everyone needed." So continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart, praising God and having favor with all people. And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. Yep, way out of time, but I totally went through everything I had. So... <laughs> uh, so, but the point of the, the message this morning was uh, if, that, if that truth isn't something that you've ever heard of, 
um, that truth that Jesus died on the cross. Uh, or you've been told there's other things that you have to do to be saved. Jesus is the only way to heaven. And that is, there's nothing else. There's nothing else you need. So, Chip, we're totally going to have a time of invitation, buddy. I'm about, like, 25 minutes behind. I did better than the 20 minutes. Um, so you guys can all come up, um, worship team. Now, if this salvation is something you've never heard of, or maybe you have and have never made that decision uh, to accept Christ as your Savior, and today's that day, like Chris, I'm going to stand up here awkwardly up front. Um, or if you have something on your heart and you just need to come laid at the feet of Christ, uh, it'll be up here. And Chris, I hope you enjoyed that online. <laughs> Thank you for speaking from your heart and speaking the Word of God, no matter how quick. It's the Word of God. Listen just for a moment from the words of Isaiah 40. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that her warfare is ended, that her iniquity is pardoned, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. Get this, a voice cries, in the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. We celebrate today the first Sunday of Advent, what is Advent? Advent is a word meaning the coming of a notable person. And for our purposes, it's the coming of the most notablest person of all, Christ Jesus. So we begin this first Sunday of Advent by singing a hymn of exultation and praise. When we think about those angels we have heard on high and the mountains in reply, singing Gloria in excelsis, which means glory as high, as high, as high can be. Glory to God on high. Let's stand and sing that promise together on this first Sunday of Advent. <laughs> Sing that one more 
time. So you can be thankful that worship is over sooner? No. You can be thankful that you were here and worshiped, studied and praised and thanked and gratituded with God's people. No matter how long or how short it takes, we can say we were glad that we were in the house of the Lord. Safe, be well, be blessed and be back next week, and it may last a little longer. We promise. Amen. And I have an announcement, if I may, since we have just a moment. Um, Pastor Chris asked if we could have a choir on December 11th. <gasps> choir members know. Whoa, oh my goodness. So this afternoon at 4 o'clock, if any of you would like to sing in that choir, come over here. 4 o'clock this afternoon, I'll have music and even some uh, CDs and uh, a link that you could use to uh, practice songs and stuff for that because we haven't got much time if we're going to try to have a choir on December 11th. But that was his request. So if you can join us, 4 o'clock today, that'll get you uh, started on this stuff. Please join us. And you can leave. <laughs>